Uh, there's different types of surgeries for uh, obstructive sleep apnea. This depends on the level of the obstruction and the degree of the apnea. If the patient has a mild to moderate apnea, sometimes uh, uh, doing an initial surgery where we remove uh, some excess tissue in the oral cavity, such as removing the some tonsils or uh, trimming the palate, may help with mild to moderate apnea. But if there's more severe cases, sometimes we do a multi-level surgery where we, dress, where we dress the airspace, including the nose, the oral cavity, the base of tongue, as well as the lower part of the throat. And those are more involved surgical options. Okay, there's definitely some risk factors uh, to watch out for in terms of uh, looking at people who may have obstructive sleep apnea. Uh, some of these risk, risk factors include uh, uh, obesity, uh, weight gain uh, does contribute to uh, uh, increased amount of snoring and or apnea. Other issues include uh, body habitus in terms of uh, how how uh, large uh, a patient's neck is. Neck size contributes to that, uh, as well as uh, the tonsil size and palate size and base of tongue size. All of those, uh, if they are enlarged, uh, can increase the risk of obstructive sleep apnea as well. If a patient uh, undergoes surgery for obstructive sleep apnea, depending on the degree of this, uh, the obstructive sleep apnea, there's varying surgeries. If it's more of the mild or moderate uh, apnea, then we typically do a procedure such as a, a uvulopalatopharyngoplasty. Again, uh, that's trimming up some of the palate in the uvula, uh, as well as removing some tonsil tissue, allowing for better air space. Uh, that is a procedure which is done, uh, uh, performed, takes about an hour or so to do. Typically, the patient will be on a soft diet and limited activities for approximately 10 days to two weeks. Uh, after that, they may resume in their regular diet and activities. Approximately two months after this type of procedure, we recommend a follow-up sleep study uh, to see how much the procedure has improved their obstructive sleep apnea. There's also treatment, uh, surgical options for treating severe apnea. Uh, as we get closer to the more severe range, uh, surgical options uh, require a more extensive uh, uh, therapy. This would mean uh, uh, treating levels uh, more than just one area, including the nose, uh, the oral cavity, the base of tongue, and the throat. This would uh, typically uh, involve a combined surgery in many cases between me, the uh, myself, and the otolaryngologist, as well as an oral surgeon, where I would. Uh, uh, correct any deviated uh, nasal septum, any turbinate hypertrophy, any elongation of the palate or the tonsils, as well as uh, uh, the lower throat. At the same time, an oral surgeon uh, will, can be involved with a procedure where they advance the tongue forward. Uh, this procedure will uh, it, is a multi-level procedure. It does take three to four hours. Uh, recovery obviously takes longer than your mild or moderate, mild or moderate apnea surgery. Uh, but uh, again, at, after two to three months, a follow-up sleep study is recommended.